thick fold closure or long closed, and it's misspelled right there, long closed quotient. So fold mass and clo clo closed quotient, quotient closure or open quotient are synonymous. We touched on this during the live stream, but the, the, simp the quick answer is yes. I, the closed quotient is the measurement of how what, how long the vocal folds are closed in any vibratory cycle, and they do that in percentages. So there's 75 percent closed, 30 uh, percent closed. I mean, 100 percent closed is holding your breath. Zero percent closed is inhaling. Um, so you know we're always at some percentage in a vibrational pattern, and I just find that talking with my clients and saying I want to add more closed quotient to this moment uh, is kind of a mood killer. Uh, kind of a, a storytelling killer. So I tend to say things like put more chest, put more buzz, put more thick fold in there. I mean, even with uh, other clients, I mean, again, and I think this goes with, you know, Philippe was saying is uh, in his live stream uh, two weeks ago or a week ago, I guess, is that um, terminology can be a big hang up. I'll even say reedy and fluty. And I use a digital keyboard, especially, you know, uh, at home and uh, online. Uh, teaching and I'll pull up sometimes the reed effect and play like an oboe sound and be like, let's listen to how this is close to a chest dominant mix. And I'll pull up the flute sound and play that and be like, let's listen to how this is similar to a head dominant mix. Cause I find for some clients, those references to reed instruments and air powered instruments like the flute work better for them to distinguish thick and thin than those actual terms, thick and thin. So, and then some of my clients like, uh, and I think this may be also from Estel. I remember seeing it, I think at uh, an Estel presentation, I like to use this four finger vocal fold model um, where I say the four is your full thick fold. Then we kind of thin out to more of a chest mix, a heady mix and a head. Uh, I've seen other people use this model, but I find that a lot of my students find it helpful to think of thick fold, thin fold, and then use their hands to model it. So they have a kinesthetic awareness external that they can see as they then try to match the internal action that's happening in their larynx. I think you gotta, we gotta practice that. Yeah. <laughs> now, Modeling that vocal fold wave. Yeah, I, th I just wanna say, you know, thick fold is not a scientific term, right? No. It's not, it's just a lot of the words we use uh, in teaching singing are, are trying to help um, match the, that singer, help that singer come to an awareness to create the coordination uh, imaging we just Im imaging like man matches said you know, this kinesthetic awareness um, but mo I think what 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 it boils down to is a closed quotient a longer closed quotient is going to require more vocal fold mass that's yeah. Well, and what it is, so like, here's how you would get, so you get, uh, to get that actual close quotient number, you use an EGG, and the EGG is two little metal electrodes that go on the side of your larynx, and they uh, give you, tell you the, you know, the close rate. So here we would see where it closes, and then it drops and it opens up. Well, if we turn that on its side, and then if we mirrored that thing a little bit like that, then we start to get a better image of what that vocal fold closure might look like. So this is a model of like what a head voice closure would look like. Uh, then I put on this other side, here's more of what a long close phase would look like, right? It closes up, there's the long phase. And so again, I'm a terrible visual artist. So bear with me, it'll look like my four year old's drawings. But uh, if we mirror that and flip it from its, you know, uh, place that you would see in the meter, you flip it like that. Now we have that general visual of what that closed phase looks like. And that's why I call that one more of a thick fold production versus this one more of a thin full production yeah. because look at that part of that close phase where it's right there that's a small little part that's coming together versus this whereas if we drew a, straw, a straight line we'd have more of a thicker rectangular part coming together right and they have chymography is one of the other tools that we have to kind of show us that and you know with all of this stuff like philippe said we're getting more and more technology uh, that's easily accessible, that's more accurate. So I think we also just need to stay open-minded. I don't think we're gonna find massive changes in that, but we might find some changes to our understanding of how much variation is actually happening as we continue to get that other work that Ingo's doing. Yeah, super. I love that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal that. Uh, that is yeah, just- I, great. Somebody else. I think I got it from Don Miller, so. The wave, the wave form, and people call it also the wave form, but it's just measuring how the vocal folds contact and for how long. And, and they do it that that wave has different shapes depending on the sound that you're making. But I love that you just turn it and it just looks like a vocal fold. Yeah. 